Welcome back everybody, my name is Philip, and today we're gonna talk about fear. And when I say fear, I don't mean the fear of jumping off a cliff or of spiders or whatever. I mean the fear or the reluctancy of starting with Photoshop. Now, I had a very interesting conversation with a friend of mine recently who said that he's really interested in the whole processing aspect of photography and he hasn't really done it before. But Photoshop is kind of a shocker because of the amount of functions available. There's so much that sometimes you just want to, you want to go and, I don't know, go and hug a puppy or something like that. Like, like this one, you just want to go and like hug it. Enough cuteness. Now, the jinx is that many people resign before they actually start with Photoshop because of the things that are available and the amount of time they would have to spend to learn it. And I totally understand. Yes, there are tons of things you can do, but think of it this way. When you got your first camera or when you're just starting out in photography, it's not that you are just running out there in manual mode and using lights and whatever to shoot models. You kind of take it step by step, right? You are gonna take a camera first into automatic mode and shoot whatever you can find to see if it's crap or not. And mostly it might be at the beginning, yeah, surely. But then eventually you're gonna switch into the aperture priority mode, into the shutter, uh, shutter priority mode or whatever it might be, right? But eventually you're gonna get more and more used to your camera and you're gonna use functions that you have otherwise not used. And it's a very similar thing with Photoshop itself. It seems scary because there's so much you can do, but what you actually need to start working on your images might just be a very small proportion of it. And because I had this conversation, I thought today we're gonna to do something a little bit different. And today I'm just gonna use one function within Photoshop, just one, which is uh, extremely important. It's called the curves. <laughs> And we're gonna use these curves to adjust an image from start to finish. We're not gonna go crazy on the editing and it's by no means a comprehensive review of curves uh, because they can be used in many different ways. But it is nice to see that one simple feature can be used so way, so much that we can go from this image right here, which is really just a piece of grass to take it in front of a sunset kind of deal uh, here in Ireland. And we're gonna just slightly adjust it in terms of that we're gonna put the attention at the center of the image, we're gonna make it so that the image has a bit more red and yellow tones, and we're gonna darken down the surroundings and actually brightening up the center with the sun a little bit more, just to finish it up. And for these kind of basic cleanups, you can go with one simple feature which you use again and again and again until you're totally used to it. And then you just take the next one and you get used to that, and then you start to combine them, and before you know it, you're going to be a pro. Now, let's jump right in uh, before we run, of course, the intro. And let's jump right in and take this one feature, the curve adjustment layers, to edit this image from start to finish with some minor adjustments. And let's go. All right, guys, let's jump right in and create our first curve. So I just brought the image into Photoshop and I didn't do anything to it just yet. Now, curves, if you have never heard of them, they're on the right-hand side in the adjustments panel right here. If you don't have that adjustments panel because you're able to kind of make Photoshop look the way you want, you can just look on the lower left, uh, lower right-hand corner, left, right, mm -hmm, and click on the little uh, fill or adjustment layer symbol and then choose curves from here, whatever you feel like. So let's create a curve and here we have a curve. Now before we use endless amounts of curves to do what we need to do, let's have a look at the curve itself and see if we can figure out and understand how it works. So you see that obviously the curve is in a square <laughs> and I have sort of a, a scale at the bottom here, right? So I have a dark sort of button right here and I have a bright button right here. And what you can see in this curve mirrors light and dark areas in your image. So if you look at my image, I have a very bright area here and then I have some bright areas in the foreground, but I also have some dark areas in the foreground. So every dark area in my image is represented by this half of the curve, by the left half, right? Because you can see it's on the dark side. Every bright area of my image is represented by the right-hand side of that curve because it's on the bright side, okay? Light and dark makes total sense so far. Now we can use this to our advantage. For instance, if I were to put a point in the very center right here, right? So I'm just clicked on the, the little thing and we're gonna go through all these options later. Uh, if I were just to click onto that, now I have the chance to kind of independently increase or decrease the brightness of dark and light areas. As an example, now that I have separated my curve in half using this point, I can now grab the, the upper part, which is the right hand side, hence the light parts and make them brighter if I want to. Okay, so if you see if I adjust only that part of the curve, the dark side part is gonna adjust with it because it's a curve and it's connected. Okay, that makes kind of sense. And now I can just drag that towards the top for instance and the bright parts would be incredible bright. Yeah? 
Alternatively, I could also drag it down and I would sort of make the bright parts way, way, way darker. Okay, so that is just simply how curves work. You can ad adjust the bright parts or the dark parts independently if you want to. You can also remove these points again by just dragging them out of the curve. So I just click them and drag them out. And you also have the chance to overall increase brightness. So if I take that point that we had set in the center before and I just drag that upwards, I'm making everything brighter in my image except the utmost bright part and the utmost black part, right? Because black is black and white is white, can't really make that any brighter. Okay, so that's just a simple principle of how a curve works. If I need brighter stuff, I can just drag it up. If I need stuff darker, I drag it down. Awesome. So let's use that to our advantage. So in my particular image, I have a sun right here, but I'm not too happy yet with the way the sun looks. And the reason for that is, let me go into a bit of a more fuller mode here. The reason for that is that it's just not bright enough for my taste. So I need to increase this big white blob to give the whole image just a little bit more brightness, okay? So I could of course either drag the mid parts up, but then I would also increase the brightness of the grass area, the dark areas, anything that's in my image. So I don't really want that. Instead, I can grab that upmost point right here on the right hand side of my curve and move it towards the left. If I do that, and I'm going to do it extreme now, you'll see that the brightness is going to increase from the sun outwards towards the rest of the image. And of course, the more I go, the more crazy it looks. So maybe we won't want to go there necessarily. But what I'm doing essentially is I'm saying that if these lines here or these kind of, you know, this, these mountains, if you want here, they represent the amount of pixels in the light and the dark areas. So I have this amount of information in my light areas and I have this amount of information in my dark areas. So if I were to sort of explain the software that white is not on the top here, but white starts, let's say here, right? Then I would start making very light areas white. And that is exactly what I'm doing by just dragging this from the right here towards the left a little bit. Now, I don't want it too extreme. I just need to give it a little bit more glow that it's a bit brighter at the actual sun area right here. And I'm already quite happy with that. Now, I kind of hope that you can actually see that because it is a very, very minor and subtle adjustment. But for me, that's all I need just to bring that sun out just a tiny bit more. All right. So that's the most simple thing you can do with curves. You make things brighter and you make them darker. And the cool thing is you can use as many curves if you, as you want, right? So you can create another curve right on top of that one and play around with more dark, uh, dark and light situations if that is what you need to do. That's actually kind of cool as well. Looks kind of interesting. Okay, so that's to the first curve adjustment layer. I'm gonna remove that second one we just did. And that just made the whole thing a tiny bit brighter going outwards from the sun and making stuff brighter. Good. So let's increase the contrast a little bit and increasing the contrast means you darken the darks down a little bit and brighten up the brights just a little bit. And we can easily do that. So let's go to our curve adjustment layer. Now, as I said, the dark parts are on the left here and the bright parts are on the right here. So I can take the curve and I'm going to start with the lower half of my curve right here. And I'm going to drag that down to maybe something like that's not bad. Now I can grab the upper part of my curve and I can drag that up. Okay. And doing this, this is kind of a typical contrast adjustment where you darken down the darks a little bit and where you brighten the brights just a little bit as well. Perfect. Let's have a look at the before and after. It just gives the whole thing a little bit more contrast, which in this case is not actually a bad thing. Now we can always decide if we want to keep stuff for both the sky and the foreground. I'm just going to leave it like that because it's not bad. Now, the cool thing about curves, however, is that it's not only useful for light and dark, it's over all, a lot of words, also extremely useful when it comes to colors. Let me show you what I mean. If I create a new curve adjustment layer, you see that on the top right here, I have an RGB dropdown. Now I can click on that and I can now select the different color channels of my image. So I can select the reds, the greens and the blues independently. Okay. So as an example, if I were to go into the reds yeah, and I were to, let's just say, grab that curve and drag it upwards, I would increase the amount of red that is in the image, but drastically, as you can see right here in the image in the background. Okay. Looks kind of shitty, but might as well. So I'm going to take that out there again. Now, what I would like to do is I'm going to give the whole image an overall red feeling um, without being too extreme. And the way to do that, but well, there are actually many ways to do that. But the way I'm going to show you right now is actually what I just did, just a little bit more subtle. So I'm going to increase the reds. Uh, so you can see if I increase the reds, our image becomes a little bit redder, of course. I'm going to find the point that I'm feeling comfortable with. So maybe something like that is not bad. If I wanted to, I could also make sure that this increased red is not actually visible in the darks. 
right? Because remember, the left-hand side has the darks, the right-hand side has the brights. So I could set another point into my curve and drag that towards the middle again. And if you have a look at the image itself, especially here at this kind of darker foreground, if I were to bring that really down, you see how the red only pertains in the sky because it's bright. And obviously in the dark areas, it's more like a blue tone now because I have actually taken red out of these parts. And this is simply incredible. I love this kind of stuff that with a simple curve one, you're able to affect darks and bright independently. So that's cool. That's just, but actually I think it's kind of cool if we have it a little bit in the shadows, just ever so slightly, maybe something like that is not bad. Cool. If we have a look at the before and after now, we have already changed quite well the color that is in the image. Pretty simple, pretty fast and pretty powerful. The cool thing is that we could also go in and don't just do this to the reds. We could also go in and, for instance, uh, maybe take out a little bit of blue altogether from our image. So let's see what happens if we try to do that, because I think the sky might look a little bit nicer. Just like that. I'm just going to take out a little bit. Right. So take the curve, drag it down, meaning reducing the blue part of my image. Cool. Let's see what we have done so far. Going from here to there getting there, looking good, looking good. I'm liking what we're putting down here with just only three curves so far. And you could even have done most of the stuff in maybe one or two. Perfect. So far we have affected the whole image, but what I would like to do is I'm going to darken down the edges just a tiny bit. And uh, yeah, so I kind of have to selectively uh, paint in if you want um, that I want to just really darken down the edges and not actually the whole image. So let's do that. Let's create another curve adjustment layer because why not? And seriously, that's the way I'm going to challenge myself in the future as well. And I have recently started just to see how far I can go with little adjustments like that with only one simple function like the curves, because it's just super fun to do that. Okay. So with the new curve adjustment layer, I'm going to drag the, da uh, the dam. Hmm. I'm going to drag the curve down to something like, let's say something like that, just ever so slightly. Now, as I need to paint in where I actually want this darkened effect in the image, I can just hit on my keyboard command and I, or if you're on the windows control and I for inverting. And you see now that the, um, the layer mask or the layer, yeah, the layer mask, which is on my curve adjustment is black. All right. And black means the effect that I have just created, meaning the darkened, uh, the darkened down area will be hidden from the image. Now I can use a white brush, right? Just because it's a complementary color to bring out the effect wherever I want it. Okay. So I could now theoretically make a nice large brush and with an opacity of 40% and a nice flow, I'm just going to bring that darkened areas out in the areas where I think it's going to be really, really cool. And that's just a little bit here in the foreground, a little bit here on that side, just ever so slightly. And it's barely going to be visible. But for me, these kind of subtle adjustments just direct the eye a little bit more where I want the eye to go. Okay. So let's have a look at the before and after for that. Yeah, that's perfect. We just have to um, sort of darken down the edges just a little bit, but just enough to divert attention to the actual light source in our image, which is the sun, right? And I want people to look at this beautiful sunset. Perfect. So thinking about the color, I think I would like to go a bit more extreme with the red. So I'm going to create what? Yeah, well, you guessed right. Another curve adjustment layer. And this time I'm going to take the reds to the limit. When I say the limit, I mean about here. So not like crazy limit, but like a good solid limit, maybe something like this. I'm going to switch over to the greens then, because I want to give the image a bit more of a yellow tone, maybe, maybe something like Maybe something like this is not too bad. That's cool. Now what I'm going to do with that, I'm just simply going to decrease the overall opacity of that particular curve adjustment layer. So if I bring it down to zero, of course, and bring it up to a hundred, you can see that this has a big influence, but it's a little bit too much for me in certain areas. So one option is just to simply decrease the opacity of that particular curve adjustment. So if we bring it to maybe something like, let's say somewhere around 40%, I think the influence it has on the image is large enough, right? It's definitely, yeah, I think it's definitely good enough. So if we look so far, what we have done with these couple of curve, curve adjustment layers, we went from a more or less flat image to something with a good solid contrast, uh, which diverts the attention of the eye towards the sun and the nice reddish tone in the image, uh, which looks actually really, really cool. Now, if we wanted to, right, if that is something we're interested in, we could also give this guy a little bit of the blue back that it had before. And you guess how we can do that? We take a curve adjustment layer, we go to the blues right here, 
and we just start to drag the blues up. Now, the more I drag the blues up, you're gonna see that in the image, depending on what other color is in there, actually, let's go back in our super view here, it's gonna little, little words, it's gonna look a little bit magenta in this case, right? And if you wanna bring it back, you have the option, of course, to play with these three colors until you get the color that you want. So if I take a little bit of the red out, we're gonna see I'm gonna get the blue back into the sky. And I kinda like this, especially in this area here. It makes it look a little bit more realistic and not as, what would you say, crazy red, I suppose, right? So if we switch it on and off, you see that of course before it's very red and this looks kind of cool, but I just need that very little and I need it only in that sky part. So what I'm gonna do like before, I'm gonna hide the whole effect by hitting Command or Control I on my keyboard. Now the layer mask is black and now with a white brush, I can bring out the effect wherever I feel like it's necessary. So in this case, I'm gonna go just with 20% just over this edge right here. Actually it's 40%, see that happens if you don't check. And I'm just gonna bring that blue out in the sky again. Now if I think it's a bit too strong, I can always after the fact go in and change the opacity. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the opacity to something like 50% just to adapt that ever so slightly. Awesome, and here we are. Now what we also could do just for good measure, let's just increase the general brightness of the image ever so slightly, maybe like this. And this is especially for the foreground, maybe something like that. So that means if it's for the foreground, I'm gonna hit Command and I and invert the whole thing hide the effect, and I'm just gonna paint that adaptive brightness into the foreground. Perfect. And the very last thing I'm gonna do with curve adjustment layers, I'm just gonna go in and create one where I darken down the edge a bit more, and then one that is gonna increase the brightness in the center to sort of really create a nice soft vignette uh, that makes the eye of the, of the beholder, I suppose, gonna go towards the center of the image. So let's do that, create a curve adjustment layer. We're gonna bring it down to something like that, all right, that's perfect. Now I'm gonna invert that, Command and I, or Control and I on the windows, and I'm gonna bring these darkened edges out at the, the, uh, the surrounding, all right? So as before, I'm just gonna paint that in, just like that, even maybe here a little bit, why not? Okay, and maybe I should also go to the exact corners right here, mm-hmm. Okay, that's kind of cool. Now, instead of just creating a new one, right, a new curve adjustment layer, I can also theoretically just go ahead and take the same one, copy it, and then change it in this one. But just for simplicity, I'm just gonna create a new one because we can. So let's create a new one. In this case, I'm gonna increase it, and I'm only looking at this very center area here of the image, not the sky or anything else, just like that. So I'm gonna go with maybe something like, this is kind of cool. I'm gonna invert it just like before, and I'm gonna bring it out in this kind of area right here in the image. Maybe even fading out towards the right-hand side here a little bit. Awesome, I really, really like that. And for me, that's just my personal taste. I kinda like this dark foreground that ends up in this kind of bright area and goes towards the sunset. I'm a big fan of the colors, maybe a little bit too much blue right here. We could solve that by switching off our um, adjustment layer where we have added the blue in, but I think I'll just go with a little bit of opacity decreasing. It's just something like, maybe that is not bad at all. Perfect, so for me, I'm actually quite happy with that. With a couple of curve adjustment layers, we went from here to here, which is a really, really nice cleanup, at least in my personal opinion, and I'm a big friend of big or strong colors anyway, right? But of course, you don't have to stop here. You can continue if you wanted to. You could have stopped earlier if it's already too much for you. That's completely up to you. But the matter of fact remains that with only a couple of curve adjustment layers, we went from something quite simple with anybody can take with any camera, really, uh, even the phone if necessary, and we cleaned it up with only curves to be a really, really cool and nice total effect to the image. We can now theoretically group all the curves if we wanted to. So we click on the first one and then shift click on the last one and then hit command or control G for grade on the keyboard to group those. And now we have the chance to adjust the overall opacity of our effects that we have used or that we have created with the curves. So if I bring that down to zero, we are back at the original. If I bring it up to 100, we have the full effect. So if I go for something like, let's say maybe, 85% or something like that. I think we have a really nice measure, a really nice adjusted image uh, with like no time at all and only curves. And there we go, with only one function or one feature in Photoshop, we took that image which was quite blunt before, let's say, and just gave it a little something, mm, that little bit more that it needs just to be really, really nice. And as I said at the beginning, there's more you can do with curves, of course, but for the purpose of this image, I think it's totally enough and I'm actually very happy with the outcome. And in any case, the jinx of this episode for you should be in any way not to have any fear of Photoshop. Do not not start 
because you have the feeling it's so much, it takes so much time to learn. Pick a couple of things that you can see on YouTube or whatever, which people use regularly, like curves, level adjustments, whatever it might be, and just try to use those to go as far as you can. I'm myself challenging myself often enough just to use few features rather than like all the kind of possibilities that you have within Photoshop, just to see how far you can go. And you might actually learn something about each single features in the process. So let's try that out. And as I said, have no fear. I'm actually gonna call that video, have no fear. Of course, it's just the first step, right? Just get going, just start with it. You will love it once you do. Now, again, quick tuning in from my part using one feature, the good old curve adjustment layers. I hope you did like the video. If you did, do not forget to hit the thumbs up button. And also, if you're new, don't forget to subscribe. Other than that, I shall see you the next time, vlog, tutorial, whatever it might be, and you have a good one. Bye.